So we finished our talk about white blood cell pathology. Now we're gonna move on to red blood cells. And you might say, we already talked about red blood cells when we talked about polycythemia, and you'd be right. But polycythemia was due to increased red blood cells. In the next coming videos, we're gonna talk about decreased red blood cells. And decreased red blood cells is known more commonly as anemia. Anemia. That will be the subject of our next few videos. Anemia is a sign of an underlying problem. Yeah, so you need to know that well. That's the first thing. What causes anemia? Well, I mean, there are literally dozens and we'll talk about them all, but I'm just gonna give you a quick rundown, a general overview, just a recap of um, how we make red blood cells in the first place, and then you'll be able to kind of discern where things can go wrong. So things like EPO causes your bone marrow to start making red blood cells. So you have a lot of DNA synthesis and replication and making, and basically the, the maturation of red blood cells. So right, DNA synthesis, and that eventually becomes your red blood cell. And your red blood cell is made up of hemoglobin. Yeah, that's the main carrier. Has a nice membrane around it to protect it. And don't forget your red blood cells need energy. It doesn't have a mitochondria, but it still has enzymes that help it get ATP. So I'll just write enzymes. And so literally anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So you can have a problem with APO, EPO. You can have a problem with your bone marrow, like aplastic anemia. We talked about, um, some causes of pancytopenia in our previous talk. So you can have problems with your bone marrow, you can have problems with DNA synthesis if you're folate or B12 deficient, you can have problems with heme, you can have problems with globin, you can have problems with your membrane, uh, you can have problems with enzyme deficiencies where your red blood cells don't get enough energy so these basically die. So literally anything that can go wrong will go wrong in this case and we're gonna talk about all of them. That was just a brief overview and when you have anemia then you're gonna have some symptoms. Uh, red blood cells carry oxygen in your blood, so if you don't have enough red blood cells, you're gonna get fatigue, you're gonna get tired, you're gonna get short of breath, you're gonna have pallor. If a patient comes in with pallor in their palmar crease or in their conjunctival rim, they're anemic, yeah? So that's just some physical exam findings. That's probably, I remember learning about that. That was one of the first things I learned when I started med school, just the physical findings of pallor, yeah? So, all right, pallor, and when they have that, then you move on to investigation, so lab tests, just to see the degree and the type of anemia. When you order, the thing you order is gonna be your good old CBC, or your complete blood count. And that's gonna tell you a host of things. A lot of things you might not need, might not be necessary, but the things that are necessary is gonna be your hemoglobin. That should be a no-brainer. That is our best way of looking for anemia. And here's the values we're looking for, so under 13, 0.5 grams per deciliter in <clears throat> men, under 12 in women due to their menstruation, and if they're pregnant, under 11, because when you're pregnant, you increase fluid and plasma volume, and that basically dilutes your, your red blood cells and basically gives you physiological anemia. So, and so we put the limit a little bit lower because it's, it's somewhat physiological and we don't want to diagnose everyone with anemia. So those are your values. And that's our best way to screen for anemia. And once you find anemia, the next thing you want to look at is MCV or mean corpuscular volume. That is basically the size of the RBC. And that's normally 80 to 100 femtoliters. If it's smaller than that, so I was right, under 80, we'll call that microcytic, meaning small, micro. If it's over that, we call that macrocytic. So that kind of makes sense. So over 100, macrocytic. That is how we approach our anemias. The best way to finding what type of anemia we're dealing with is by first seeing if we actually do have anemia, and then looking at the size of the red blood cells, the MCV. And by doing that, we can stratify all the anemias in the three categories. Microcytic, normal, or normal cytic, so between 80 and 100, and then macrocytic. That's a systematic way to look at anemias and it makes things very easy. We'll start with microcytic anemias and that'll be the topic of our next video. See you then, thanks.